does life suck? Double underline so hard. Because people are selfish and petty. Charlie. No, life sucks because my ex left me for an off-Broadway monologuist. <laughs> it's not what you think. I think you've been having sex. Okay. It is what you think, but this is your fault. Mr. Henry, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just having a bad life. It'll be over eventually. Okay, we're gonna have to wake up super early to make it to school on time. No, no. Yes, you are. You wanna bed? I'm not gonna bet you. Stop the look. Don't give each other secret looks. <laughs> so what did you guys do at school today? I don't know, kid stuff. I just did grown-up stuff. It's the middle of the day and you're still wearing your pajamas. These are golf pants. <laughs> I'm still getting over my ex. Come on, I want you to meet my mom. Where are you from? New Zealand. I don't see all the Hobbit movies, so. Oh, so you know all about us and our ways. That was sassy. Yeah, I'm a sassy little Hobbit. Are you seeing someone? I wouldn't say we're seeing each other. <laughs> Who wants presents? Me! I'm a good father. You're good at having fun with that. I got your iPads. <laughs> They're six years old. They should always be having fun. Daddy! Are you girls ready for the greatest weekend of your lives. You say that every weekend. Yeah, we're doing it again. I hit the water in such a way that took my mom. You hate mom. Of course not. Do you love her? Love is complicated, girls. We can't predict what's going to happen or how we're going to change, but everything is going to be okay. How do you know? I don't, but it just helps sometimes to say that. Maybe we'll stay. Now we know how we're friends. We're more than that. We're parents. I'm going to punch you. Please don't hit me in the face. Oh, that was my ear, man. I know, but well, you said not God, the face. The ear is the face. Thanks, guys. Guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. We Absolutely. have to be here, but uh, you're welcome as well. Um, we're, we're obliged to be here, but we're also delighted to be here. <laughs> uh, my first question is, you know, what, what prompted you to, to, to write this film? Where did this film uh, come from? It's a, it seems like a very personal take on a group of very agreeable people in a non-agreeable situation. <laughs> That's a really uh, great way to put it. I've never heard it like that. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it's pulled from a lot of places. It's a very personal film to me. Um, I'm a dad. Um, I went through a breakup with um, the kid's mom, and I guess that's the first and foremost inspiration for the story, but it comes from a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of places and uh, friend stories um, and just wanting to examine that sort of situation when you there's not animosity uh, but it's still difficult when uh, uh, in, in, in the breakup in this story um, you know figuring out how to be a parent but be apart from your partner one of the things that I thought was so truthful in the film, I think, uh, for parents and for people in relationships is that you learn things about the pressures that you put on the other person only in the breakup. Like, you'd only learn those things that you, that you put that person through over the course of a number of years through a breakup, which I think she says to, to your character at one point, your, your ex says, you know, I was the one doing all these things. And he says, I guess, yeah, I just let you take the lead, and that's so much pressure. You would never think about that unless you broke up with someone. You'd never hear that. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I think uh, in my experience, some of the you 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 learn how to be the partner you need to be sometimes after you break up with that partner. Um, <laughs> hopefully, you take it into the next relationship. Jermaine, how did you get involved with the film? Uh, I was sent the script, and I I read it, and I finished it. <laughs> um, which One is of a the very, few. It's, it's, it's a very good sign. Um, and, and what was the, that question? How did you get involved with the film? You were answering. No, I, knew, I heard that question, but I thought you had another question while I was answering that question. You're so quick with your <laughs> no. questions; they're rapid fire. I'm just trying to keep you on your toes, man. <laughs> um, yeah, and I liked it. We we talked on the phone, um, 
and I I liked a lot about it. I also um, like graphic novels, and I got to pretend that I, I had the ability to, to make one of those, and um, it was it was fun to do. Where did uh, how did graphic novels come into uh, come into this story? Where did that start? For you when you were writing it? Well, I love the uh, comics and the world of uh, graphic novels. Fun Home is one of my favorite uh, books. I love the show it turned into. Um, but I teach at the School of Visual Arts here in Manhattan, and they had a retrospective of the history of the graphic novel at SVA. And that sort of informed, that gave me the idea of making him a SVA instructor and including uh, that is a plot. Was there a part of it for you where you're like, okay, this is about me, but it can't be that much about me. He should not be a filmmaker. Well, well. I mean, I thought, I mean, I liked, I wanted him to be an artist of some sort. I, graphic, the graphic novelist, I thought, lended itself to uh, sort of visually telling some story. He, we see him making his comic book uh, in the movie, and it, and he's making a comic story about the breakup that he's actually going through so it, uh, it was an economical way to tell some more story uh, without getting too expositional he's also well he's also discussing aesthetically how comics can be sort of representative of the way you present yourself and the way that you actually are or the way that something actually is right that's the whole presentation that you have with the this is not a pipe yeah, I think uh, a lot of my favorite uh, comic books, such as Fun Home, um, um, they have an autobiographical sort of strain to them, and there's no shame in that. The sort of it's a story, but it's also representational of this sort of person who created it as well. Um, uh, so I, I I really admire that um, and seek to do that in my own work. Jermaine, when you get a, a script like this, how often, because you, you, you come from a comedy background and a, and a comedy show where you were a writer on it, do people expect you to bring a certain amount of your own routine or ideas to it? And it, is it refreshing to get a script like this where you can kind of just come on and act? Um, yeah, I think that it, it's a lot less pressure for me not to, you know, to act in something, someone else, right? Um, uh, we we did improvise a little in the film, but um, also it's good to know that the script was good and uh, there's a danger in improvisation that the uh, director might fall in love with it too much because it's new to them, so they might put in too much of it. So you've got to use it sparingly. Um, yeah, so does that answer that question? It does answer the mm. question. <laughs> if um, If it doesn't, you could... We, you could put in another question later that was more relevant to my answer. A lot, a lot of the best lines in the movie are improvised. Uh, like, for instance, the one in the trailer. Um, I wrote, I'm having a bad life. Jermaine added, it'll be over eventually. Oh. <laughs> so they work together on it. Do, <laughs> yes. do, you feel, do, you, do, you, do you feel pressure to bring uh, punchlines sometimes to the script, or is that just playing on set a little bit? You know what, one thing is I'm quite bad at learning lines and uh, I was just like, it was something like this. Um, <laughs> sometimes when I, when I do certain takes, I, I've got a good short term memory, I can learn lines really quickly, but uh, once we've been doing too many takes, that it's, they start to go and then my own versions of, of it might come up. I, I don't feel pressure, you know. So some people like, of, often you'll, um, in, in a comedy anyway, they'll do some improv takes. So at, at the end, when you've got the lines, then you, you throw something else in. James, are you precious at all with, with your lines? You've, you've written and directed a, a, a number of features now, and, and you've written for others as well, I think, too, right? Um, do, you, do you find yourself getting precious at all with lines, or have you learned to just sort of... I, I, I like to be uh, open. I think I've gotten less precious over time, uh, and especially going into this... I remember, I can remember sometimes with Jessica Williams, who's in this movie and uh, is really great and really great at improv. Some, at, at some point, she could just read a, my looks and she'd say, oh, do the script. Uh, 
because she would be going so far off. And I said, just can't, maybe once. Let's just get the script once. What is Jim's very script polite. Like? Jim's very polite. So you can see him um, just considering how he's going to put it. And, he, <laughs> and that's enough. You're like, oh, okay. Okay. We see what you're saying. You see, we see what you're trying just to think of, of how, how you're going to put what you're going to say. Just kind of politely frustrated. <laughs> I, I guess. I, I, I guess. I don't it's know. It's like this. Uh, uh, and then, then that's enough. And then Jessica would be like, "Do the script." <laughs> uh, but I'm not in this film in particular. I um, I want I encourage people to put it in their own words, and because um, I had Regina Hall and Jessica Williams, and everyone in this movie was very agile with improv, and not like coming up with jokes per se, but uh, being in the moment in character and uh, coming up with stuff that was appropriate to the moment, which was what I was interested in. And that was something that you sort of cast for, or was that something that once you cast, you realized you could do? Uh, I was hoping for it, and uh, f and it turned out to be that everyone was game and sort of you know you never know. Sometimes you run into actors who sort of they w that script is what they want to do and it, they're really sort of bound to it um not everyone is comfortable with improv jermaine uh how did you develop the relationship with the the kids that you're acting with in this film they're just very friendly and we um they seem to get on with everyone so i didn't really have to work on it um you know i didn't i didn't say anything like keep away from me when i first <laughs> met them <laughs> Only look me in the eye when we're on screen. <laughs> I, I didn't do any of that stuff. I, I um, made sure to edit myself. No, just joking. I like that. I like them. Uh, yeah, we just got on. Yeah, and you know, I'm a father, so I know, I know, a way that freaks kids out um, that I've seen other people do <laughs> is that they'll talk to them, hello, and that, and the kids don't understand what's wrong with this person. Yeah. But I know, as a father, I know not to do that. You know, but people who haven't been around kids um, speak to them with this weird voice that they think of as something like a fairy from a weird pantomime. <laughs> uh, was Jermaine the first person that you cast for the film? Did you go? Did you he go? He was our that? first. Yeah, he was the first cast member that came on. Everyone sort of. Uh, it was after casting Jermaine that um, I tried to figure out who would be uh, fun to put him in scenes with. But yeah, it started with Jermaine. And how did you cast everybody around him? Did you uh, audition people with Jermaine or? Uh, no, I, uh, I'm, I'm a fan of Regina Hall um, and I thought that they would be fun to see together. Um, everyone, all, everyone in the cast, I, uh, I, I wrote a passionate letter to saying, please be part of this. You know, it's a... It's a uh, a boilerplate. <laughs> yeah. That you have on your desk. Yeah, just change the name. Uh, no, I've, but seriously. I've always loved your work, <laughs> Jermaine. I, 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 I did uh, recruit, personally sort of recruit each and every one of these actors and am a fan of each and every one. Um, you know, uh, no one auditioned. They're all great actors who have, uh, have a, um, interesting and uh, varied body of work already, so they didn't have, you know. The kids auditioned, I see. Oh, the kids did. Yeah, the kids did. Jermaine, uh, coming from Flight of the Concords uh, and a few of your other projects, did this feel like something different for you, something where you weren't, you didn't have to be uh, sort of as funny all the time? You're, you're sort of playing, you're sort of downplaying your character. He's much more subtle and uh, slightly morose as he's walking around. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and I nailed it. <laughs> I, uh, I uh, yeah, I guess so. And I, um, in a comedy, you have to think of how it has to be amusing every second, you know. Um, so I, I didn't have to think about that. But I, uh, people, people that asked me about being a comedian, going into something more dramatic, and that it kind of worried me. Um, like, why would that be a problem? <laughs> like, why, why, why do people think I'd be nervous about that? Um, that would more concern me than the idea of it, um, to myself. But I, uh, 
you know, I, I um, have emotions, so I, uh, I knew just to display them. You can channel them. I, yeah, I can display them in a normal human manner. I, I, I wasn't too worried about that part of it. Well, how does it concern you when, when, when other people ask you? Does it concern you in the sense that they don't necessarily understand what it is to act? Or does it concern you because it's like, wait, no, because, now Well, I? I don't know either. Right. I don't know either. So, uh, oh, is this, is this going to be hard? Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, no one, no one really, everyone, everyone does it differently, you know. Some people are trained and some people just act like themselves and, you know, some people haven't done anything and they're, and they're just great the first time they're on screen and, and who knows, who do knows. You, do you find it to be a lot, a lot different? Does it feel different doing it? Um, yeah, I guess, I guess um, I, I just had to, it was the first time I've done my natural voice except for Jermaine in the, in the Fly the Concords and um, I just had to keep remembering not to go into those habits of that character because I usually have put on a voice for a, for a character. What are the, what are some of those habits that that, that you go into? Um, well, the, that's that would be just it's slipping into Jermaine of Flight of the Concords, who is um, I, I don't know what's wrong with him. But <laughs> he's not very good at ex expressing himself emotionally, anyway. And and this character, you have to know what he's feeling all the time. Did you ever find yourself on set slipping into that character and kind of being like, wait, stop, God, let I me go back? I think early on, yeah. But um, <laughs> there might be moments where, where I can see it. Hopefully other people don't see it. <laughs> or you can see Jermaine from Flight of the Concords in the movie? Yeah, I mean, a couple of times I think I can see it. Yeah. What, what's, um, what's, what's going on with Flight of the Concords uh, these days? Uh, we haven't done any. We haven't played for a, a couple of years, really, but we've been talking about... Um, some film ideas and, uh, you know, we're, gonna, we're hopefully going to tour. We're going to be touring this time this year around America, but um, we both got busy with other things, so we're hoping next year, early next year, a tour. Was it one of those things? All right, yeah. Hoping, hoping. <laughs> yeah. Um, was, it, was, it, was it one of those things that you guys needed to take a break because you've been doing it for so long, kind of coming up together, and it was time to start doing different projects? Yeah, well, we always did that. You know, it was only ever a hobby. We were roommates, and we would um, we would have a gig every two weeks. We'd play at the comedy bar. Sometimes there would be ten people, <laughs> and uh, and then we'd have then we'd do our other jobs. And, and um, when we finally had enough songs, we we toured, and then it became the show where we we it would be a hundred days without a break from each other, or you know, so. Yeah, so we had we needed longer breaks after longer uh, <laughs> periods of doing it. I think we have some time for audience questions. Does anyone in the audience have a question right here in the front? Both hands. Yeah. Okay, it's business time. I wanted to ask you, I'm a big fan since Flight of the Concords, and we know you're a comedian, we know you're a singer, you're an actor. So my question is, it's a little bit complex. Okay. Uh, if you, did you always want to work in entertainment industry? And if you didn't succeed, what would you do today and why? Um, I don't know what I could do. I, uh, I, I wanted to be an animator very early on when I was a kid. And, um, and, I, and I did try that for a little while. I made some animated short films, but so it was quite a test of patience doing that. We made some, made some short um, stop motion films with a friend of mine um, and started an animation company even but then other stuff started taking off so fortunately I don't have to play with plasticine for the whole day <laughs> you, it's one of those things where you had, uh, you know you spend 10 hours and then you watch the 10 seconds of footage at the end of the day and go wow look it's moving um, uh, I don't know what I would do I um, I'd always imagined with the, the time I grew up, they would, they kind of let us believe that we would all be computer programmers. <laughs> In the future, everyone will be a computer programmer. So that's what I'd always imagined. Uh, another question? Hi, Jim. <laughs> Hi. Um, so what was the most challenging thing that you had to overcome while directing places, things, um, this film, or places 
um, people, places, and things. Most challenging thing to overcome uh, while making the film? I hate to say it wasn't, uh, it, it was a pretty pleasant shoot. Um, uh, actually, making this movie was, um, uh, this is, it was my th third film, so I knew what to expect to some degree, and we had all the res we had the enough money to make the make it in the way that I wanted. Um, I, it's boring and technical, but probably the biggest challenge uh, of shooting this film in New York was how noisy New York is. Uh, um, we had a lot of uh, sirens, alarms, tenants in uh, apartment buildings, um, planes, planes all the time. And that, uh, you know, you're trying to get through the day, you try, every, you're rushed every day to get, just film all the material and, the, and you have to stop five minutes for a plane to go by. That's, it was anxiety inducing. Another question? Hey, I'm just curious what your writing process is and if you could run us through sort of from the beginning to the end, like how long it took you to complete the script. Oh, uh, that's it's long and boring. Uh, uh, I would say, I mean, I... From I, the beginning from to the <laughs> end. Well, I was, born, I was born in Goshen, Indiana. Uh, no, uh, you know, I generally, I, t I teach screenwriting. I always tell my students uh, the first draft is a race against your own doubt, and I try to just um, write as quickly as possible before I'm overcome with, oh, this isn't any good. Because uh, uh, if you get the first draft out, and uh, then you can, you can do a lot. But if you get in the middle and uh, don't finish or stop, then you, can, you might never start, or at least I might never start again. So I wrote a draft quickly. Um, What's quickly? Uh, it pro I mean, I, I worked on it every day until I was done, and it was probably three months or, or so. For the first draft? For the first draft. Oh. Well, Sylvester Stallone wrote Rocky in three days. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Uh, fast, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I've, I couldn't write a screenplay in three days. Mm. But I did, I just didn't stop. I, every day... I told myself, no matter what I was doing, if, if I was teaching or whatever, I'm going to at least spend an hour dedicating my mind to this thing. Um, do you write linear, uh, in a linear way? Do you note card and outline first? What, what's your process there? Uh, well, I started, uh, when I first started, I did outlines, but now I, I just, um, um, I think about something for a long time. And I kind of know when I'm ready to start. Uh, but I don't write anything down necessarily. I just think about it. I listen to a lot of music and exercise and try to uh, Im imagine images and things like that and just let it stew for a while. Do we have uh, two more time for two more questions? Who has the microphones? Um, Jim, you talked about uh, you're a teacher at the School of Visual Arts. What amazes you most about your students? Amazes me about them. The well, I every I'm interested in. Be nice. They might be watching. <laughs> you know, just how uh, I love seeing people who have never ha, are inexperienced in telling stories and how they figure it out. Um, I I get it's boring to me to kind of see someone who has a uh, you know, a knowledge of three act structure and sort of they know they've read all the Hollywood books and stuff. I like to see students just, you know, figuring, just telling a story as the instinct is driving them. And that, that inspires, inspires me when I see a student who's just put something together that just isn't like anything else. It isn't like what people are doing out there. It's their own thing. Uh, that's what I like to try to foster, and, and, and it's really amazing when you see it. 
Uh, Jermaine, I, I understand that the government of New Zealand is running a competition to redesign their flag, mm -hmm. your flag. Yeah. I'm curious, as a former artist, did you submit an entry and any chance of you and the Concords being on the flag? <laughs> We've made submission after submission. <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't say a former artist. Uh, it would be more like that, that's something I, I fantasized about doing. I would never cl uh, classify myself as an artist. Um, you can go on the Guardian um, newspaper website and have a look at some of the flags they have, and they, they are very subtly different. They've put 40 up, and they're very similar. So it's going to have a swirl on it, we think. <laughs> uh, guys, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you. Right. Thanks. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And um, folks, how can, how can folks see people, places, things? How can folks see their film? Uh, it comes out this Friday. It will be at the IFC Center in New York and the Arclight in L.A. and uh, on iTunes and on demand. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks.